So last video, we were taking a look at how we can make tileable textures so we can get our base uh, buildings completed and made. So we have our base buildings we have blocked out. So why don't we just get into uh, Maya real quick and go ahead and start building out our buildings. So I want to get into Maya. And here's my blank scene. I think if I go to Windows, I want to see if I have my texture loaded in. So rendering editors, hypershade, that's where we have all of our textures. And I'm going to check this Lambert. I didn't name it anything, so I don't know if that's what it is. So I want to call that texture material. And it looks like I do have my uh, texture sheet we were working on out of Photoshop loaded into my Maya scene. So make sure that's loaded in. And I want to attack this red stucco building first. And the way we're going to do this is we're just going to focus on building the walls of this building. We're not going to worry about the doors, uh, the windows. And in fact, we know a few things about this building and the way we're building the game. Uh, these doors are not going to open. Uh, the windows uh, don't necessarily need to have, uh, you know, you can't don't necessarily have to look through them. I think a black background would be just fine in keeping with the aesthetic of uh, the 2D game. So we really don't have to worry about modeling any openings in our side of our building. So we're just going to keep it really basic. We're just going to stitch together our tileable texture. And then we're going to look and see how we can model in some of this damage we see on the sides here. All right. So let's see, I know I want to build that building, so I'm going to go to my Unity project. And since we spent that time in pre-production uh, blocking out our level, I can select that first building in my scene. And if I look over at my scale, I know it's five by eight by nine units. And a unit in this case, in Unity's case, is meters. So I'm going to go into Maya now that I know the dimensions of my building. I'm going to make sure that I'm going to go to Display, or is it Windows? I'm going to go to Windows, Preferences. I'm going to go to Settings. And I want to make sure my working units is in meter. Make sure you do that. So we have the exact same working units between Unity and Maya. If you don't change it into that, then our building is going to be 100th of the size, and it's going to be a building for ants. So that's not what you want. So now that I'm in meters, I'm going to go ahead and create a polygon primitive and I want to create a plane but I'm not just going to select plane I'm going to go to this little options box here and I want to make sure I have only one division each so I'm going to press create and there I have my one by one meter patch that we're going to start building our building with so I'm going to go ahead and apply my texture to that so I'm going to go to windows uh, rendering editors hypershade and I'm going to take my texture, middle mouse click, hold, and drag, and place it right on that patch there. I'll minimize my hypershade. I'll go to Windows, UV Editor, and pull up my UV sheet. And now I need to position the UVs on this one little patch right here. So I'm going to select right click in my UV Texture Editor and select all of my UV points. I'm going to press R on the keyboard to bring up my scale shortcut. I'm going to scale it, and it looks like that's the texture we need. But you'll notice something here. My stucco texture is quite smaller than the rest of my textures on my texture sheet. So that'll be important in a second. But I'm going to go ahead and select the top UVs. I'm going to hold X so I can snap the grid. I'm going to do the same thing for bottom. And since we intelligently laid out our texture sheet when powers of two and set up our grid perfectly, it's really easy to just snap our textures. So one thing we got to take into account, since our stucco texture is a lot smaller than our brick texture, for instance, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this and show you the difference of how it's displayed. So with this new... Uh, patch here. I want to go ahead and do the same thing for my brick here. I'm going to snap it like so. Just make sure I'm getting. Oh, see, I went too far there. Just holding X to snap to the grid with my move tool, which is W as a shortcut on your keyboard. So now that I have both of these textures set up, 
let's zoom in real close and let's look at the resolution of our textures here. You'll notice that even at a somewhat close distance, my brick texture still looks pretty clean. You can't, you can't really see too many pixels here. But look at my stucco texture. It's pixel city. That's not what we want. So how are we going to fix that? I mean, we're working in meter units, right? We, that's, what's going on? Nothing, hmm. Well, I purposely made my stucco texture smaller because it has less variation on the texture. See, with our brick and our uh, stucco and our wood, we want to have it a little bit larger so we can have more variation and uh, can contain more information with the variation on the texture. But my stucco is pretty much just randomly distributed noise there. So that's why I made it a little bit smaller. And we can easily fix this. We're just going to scale it down. So I'm going to click on my channel box shortcut here. And I'm going to select all my scales and hit 0.5. And that way, my resolutions are about the same here. That just means we're going to have to use more patches for my stucco building. So even though it's 5 by 8 by 9, it's really going to be 10 by 16 by 18 because our patch for our stucco is effectively cut by half. So I'm gonna get rid of that brick for now. And what I'm gonna do now is, I'm going to hold the D key, and I'm going to reset the pivot point of my stucco texture so I can easily snap them together. So with my D key held, we get this weird new uh, handle button, and then I'm gonna hold the V key, D is in dog, then V is in vector. Now I can snap the pivot point to any vertex on my stucco tile here. And if I release them, now I have a strong pivot point that I can start really stitching this building together. So I'm gonna go ahead and snap this to the center of my grid, and I'm going to get this at 90 degrees. I'm gonna approximate it with just the handle there, and then I'm gonna go into my channel box and make it exactly 90. This would be a good point now to freeze our transformations in our channel box. So we do that by going to modify, freeze transformations. And when I press this, notice what happens in my channel box. So I'm gonna freeze transformations. And now my tileable piece basically is just set to default values here because this is the default value I want for my uh, stucco texture. Now when we start snapping this thing together, we don't have to worry about all the random uh, scale and weird translation uh, values. Now we're just zeroed in and we're ready to start stitching this building together. So by holding down control and pressing D, I effectively duplicate that. And I've brought up my outliner here. So if you go to Windows, Outliner, we can see exactly what's going on in my scene here. And I'm just going to nestle this right here. I'm going to scale it. I don't really need to see my timeline, so I'm going to kind of go over it right there. So with my outline nestled here, I see a lot of stuff going on here. I see a lot of useless boxes and channels here. Well, the easy way to clean up your outliner and just get keep the pertinent information we need. Let's see, you go to go to delete all by type, and we're going to delete our history. And that will so hopefully clean up all this stuff in our outliner. All right, it didn't. Let's see, let's try that again. Delete all by type history. I guess we'll have to manually do that. We can also go to, I think, file, and there's a clean up button here somewhere. Let me look for it. Yeah, we're, we can go to optimize scene size. And if we press the options on it, the default options will get rid of any unused uh, assets within Maya here. All right. And then I guess we'll just have to delete them by manually. So that's not too bad. All right. Looks like I had two there. Now I'm just dealing with one plane. And... I can even just call it 001. Let's see, how do you get to start with a, uh, a letter first? Plain 001. So I'm gonna go ahead and start duplicating this. And there's a quick way I can do this. If I go to edit, duplicate special, I have a little options box here. And what did we say we needed? Well, since we're at half the scale, we're gonna need 10 units across. All right. So I'm going to go to number of copies 10, and I'm going to translate it, let's see, 0.5 units. 
And what that's going to do is it's going to go ahead and move them the correct units over 10 times. Actually, it went up. That was our y-axis. Let me redo that. So I don't want to move over any in my y-axis. What axis do I want to move over? It looks like my x-axis. Yeah, there's my little axis indicator right there. So I'm going to move over 0.5 units that duplicate. And now I have a nice bottom row. And I can even select the whole bottom row, double check how tall my building is. So I need to get 16 units up because that's 18, eight full units. And I'm working with half units, so I need to go 16 up. So reset my zero translation. Now go 0.5 in the Y direction and do 16 copies. And boom, I've created my building now, like so. So I can now effectively select all of these and I'm going to group them all together, make them one mesh. I'm going to combine them and I'm going to hit combine. And now I have a whole mesh, but let's see, if I take these verts, I can see that they're not, the verts are not stitched together. Well, the, that's going to take a lot of time to go in and merge all these verts one by one. Well, never fear. I know a little shortcut. I'm going to right click and go into vertex mode. I'm going to select all my vertices. I'm going to go to edit mesh. And I'm going to go and select the merge option with a little option window here. And you can see we have this little threshold value here. I'm going to set this to 0 0.001. And it's only going to merge vertices that are 0 0.001 distance apart. And since these vertices are laying right on top of each other, it'll only merge vertices that are basically snapped together or laying on top of each other. So I hit apply there. And if I go and select a single vertice, I can now see that one single vertice is connecting to all four of these planes here. That's great. Okay. So I'm going to click out of that. And why don't I do a test render real quick? So I'm going to go to my render options up here. I'm going to click it and just do a test render like so. All right, that's not very good. Uh, let's do my software. I think we need to go to the op render setting options and let's set our production quality up and let's take another render. That's not looking too bad, is it? And you can already start to see that, if I bring up my reference, that, that stucco right here is starting to look somewhat similar to the stucco we have in my level here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just export this out and do a test view inside of Unity to make sure that my steps so far are doing pretty good. So I'm going to select this. I'm going to go into my outliner. And look, we have all these different planes here. Now I think we can go to uh, edit, delete all by type history. It'll clean up all those different plane uh, nodes there that were just in our history. And now we have one plane, plane 001. I want to call this test stucco wall 001 for now. And here we're going to see how we can export models from Unity from Maya into Unity. So I'm going to go to export selection here. Select my options. We're going to make sure that we're exporting an FBX. And if you don't see the FBX options, go to Windows, Setting and Preferences, Plugin Manager. And sometimes you may need to load in the FBX option to export. So look for this FBX Maya.mll and make sure that loaded is checked right there. Mine already was, so that's good. So I'm going to do the same thing. Export selection. FBX export. And we have to do something very important here. Because all there's so many different programs out there, and Unity can't account for all the modeling programs here, sometimes our exportation uh, options need to be tweaked in whichever program we're using. And in this case, if we just export from Maya to Unity without accounting for our scale again, 
something's going to get messed up. So I want to go to files type specific options. All right. And I'm going to collapse these so we don't get too confused. I'm going to go to advanced options. And I'm going to go to units. And this will, uh, I think this is automatically checked right here. So I'm going to uncheck that. And I'm going to set it to centimeters. This right here ensures that our meters are going to show up the same from Maya to Unity. So that's one little step we have to take into account when exporting from Maya to Unity there. I'm going to call this Test Stucco Wall. And I'm just going to export it from my desktop for now because it's just a little test here. So that's exported. And I'm downloading a game right now. So there's my test file right there. So I'm going to bring up Unity. And I'm just going to just casually drop it into uh, my scene here. So I'm going to account for all that stuff. So since this is just a test, I'm not too worried about organizing it. I'm just going to drop it straight into there. And I'm going to drop it into my scene. Where is it? There we go. I'm doing this because there's a, there's a problem we have here. All right. Is that transparent? Let me let me just uh, rotate this. I know what happened. I should have taken the material off of the wall here. So I'm going to try that again. Before when you export something, uh, make sure that your material is not attached. Just go ahead and put the default Lambert on there, because then we don't want to export the texture with it. So. That's another little checklist, and I'll go over the uh, checklist more in depth when we make our first asset complete and ready to go in Maya. But for right now, that's something you want to keep in your keep in mind. And I'm just going to save over my stucco wall. I'm going to make sure that my units is set to centimeter. I'm going to export selection again. Yes, I want to replace. So now I shouldn't have that issue anymore. Delete that old stucco wall. Now you can see that I don't have my texture there. I'm just going to drag and drop my stucco wall in here. Now I don't have that weird transparency thing going on. My Maya was just trying to include my uh, a custom material in with uh, the <laughs> the model, and it just as you can see, it caused a weird a weird thing going on. All right, so I have a few different materials set up, and I'm going to just start over from scratch. We're going to make our own stuff. You'll notice that Lambert 1 was brought in from Unity, or from it was brought in from Maya, and I just deleted it. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a material now, and we're going to call this Texture Main Mat. And we're just going to attach my texture that I was working with on it. Let me get rid of that PSD. And that's our texture from Photoshop we had going on. I've just imported it. Let me go ahead and maximize this. So with my material selected, I'm going to single click on textures and drag and drop texture into my Beto slot right there. Now when I drag and drop my texture onto my stucco, we get my stucco. And if we zoom in, it's looking pretty good. You know, not too bad. But when we zoom out, the ugly truth rears its head. Look at these seams on our model. That doesn't make sense though. We were so careful about getting our texture perfectly lined up in Photoshop here. You know, we had this grid going on. It was perfectly lined up. And we were so careful to perfectly line up the texture on our grid here. Well, here is a hard truth you need to know about tileable textures inside of game engines. Game engines need padding on the UV border. So what does that mean? I'm going to bring up my hypershade again. And I'm going to drop it on my texture here. Even though this looks okay in Maya, we saw that in Unity we had all those seams there. That's a big that's a big ugly little uh ugly little artifact going on here. Basically what's happening is the farther you zoom out from a model, the more noticeable these lines are going to be because 
the game engine, the way it renders, remember those textal, textals and pixels thing? They don't exactly line up on our perfectly laid out UV borders anymore. So if I go into Maya and it looks perfect, it's not. So how are we going to fix this? I've already combined and merged my vertices. Do I have to make a brand new texture? Am I going to have to make a brand new model? It's a really easy fix, though. So I'm going to bring up my UV texture editor. And something cool is happening here. I have all of my tileable textures now laying completely on top of one another. So I, to prove that, I can just select one single UV. And here's a little nice shortcut. If you select one UV and hit Control and right click and hit to shell, you'll select all the UVs connected to that one you previously had selected. So as you can see, I have all these different UV islands laying on top. And that single one I clicked on, now you can see that I've moved it and it's no longer positioned directly on. So that's a little trick to show you exactly what's going on. So what is padding? Well, we need to select all of our UVs here and we need to scale it down from the center and we need to add a nice little pad around the UV border here. But won't that mess with the uh, tileable texture? Well, I'm going to zoom in sort of and I want you to point out where the textures are. Since we were so careful to make a good tileable texture and we were so careful to create a nice uh 25 256 by 256 texture here and we we can scale it straight from the center we get a nice little pad here and now maybe i'm gonna increase that just a little bit we just want a few pixels padding all right so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to export this newly edited uh, object here with the padding on the uv border into Unity to see if that fixes our seam problem we were having. So export solution, stucco wall, but this time I'm going to call it O2. So I can have two separate models. Uh, what did I forget to do? I forgot to put default Lambert on there. So I'm going to do that again. And I, already, I still have my unit set to centimeters there, so we're good. I'm going to save over that. So let's minimize these guys. There's my Stucco O2. I'm going to minimize that there, and I'm going to drop it right onto assets. And you'll notice Maya still brought over that Lambert one, so we can delete it. And here's my stucco wall O2. I'm going to drop it into my scene. It's pink. But now I'm going to drop my same material on there, and I'm going to do a side by side comparison between my two walls here. All right, looks like it's fixed. Here's our old model with no UV boarding, border padding. And here's our new wall here with UV padding. No lines visible at all. And we still get a nice seamless texture, even though we're not right on the border there. No lines, lines. You can see them vertically pretty easily. In fact, I'm gonna, oops. Let's maximize that so we can see more. There we go. Lines up and down, no lines. So that's perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and stop this video here. The next video, we're going to see how we can go ahead and make my complete building and add some damage in without messing with our UV padding and our UV uh, layout. We're going to ha have some nice little modeling and texturing tricks where I can take this existing flat uh, piece here and model in some dents and damage really easily. All right, so see you next video.